Good evening and welcome to live. And I'm just waiting for a few people to come on stream. I'm also going to hook myself up here so I can actually see what's going on. And we've got some people joining. Sally, good to see you. Uh, Caribbean whiskey drinker, just dramming. Nick, good to see you, mate. It was good to sit next to you at that, uh, that masterclass. A few other names here. I should put this somewhere so I can see it. Um, Lockie, mate, good to see you, the whiskey drinker. Oh, you're all coming in. Wonder and whiskey. Right, fair enough. Hey, 45 in, James, good to see you. Uh, wow, Barley Seamus, good to see you, mate. Travelling whiskey reviews. Okay, we, we, we have a quorum. We have enough people to get started. Hey, uh, my name's Andrew Durbidge. I'm uh, the director of the Scotchman Whiskey Society and the cellar master and a few other things. I've really got to come up with a, a better, better job title and, and description uh, for what I do uh, at some point. Uh, and I'm not Matt Bailey. Uh, Matt's having a night off. Um, I don't know why, to be honest. He just said, you want to do live tonight? And I said, sure, okay. Uh, I assume he's doing something more uh, more interesting and exciting. Or he probably just wants a break, which is fair enough. Um, trying to think of what to say and talk about at these things um, can be, uh, oh, it's always an ongoing thing, so uh, I, I, I don't blame him. So it is my pleasure to be with you. Forgive me for looking away from the camera. I'm just trying to step, set my other phone in a Spot so I can see what's going on. Jamesy Poos, the Whiskey Brothers. Uh, who's that? Mr. Den15, good to see you. Uh, Whiskey Lates. <sighs> Glasses, I'm staring in. Oh, it's professional. It's fantastic stuff, isn't it? So, hey, welcome. Uh, it's a Tuesday night, 10th of March, and uh, we're going to have some fun. I've got something to talk about, and it's going to be very relevant to what I've been doing the last four or five days. Um, but uh, we're going to spend some time together, and if we're going to spend some time together, we should have a dram together. Um, I'm going to have a, a little drop here. I've actually got two two drams ready. Um, we'll start with this one. Uh, this was uh, on an outturn not too long ago. See the bigger picture, uh, 9.168. Beautiful space cider. Uh, this one happens to be 15 years old. Uh, it's from a refill ex bourbon hogshead, which is what I felt like tonight. Actually, I felt like a space cider. Uh, I've been doing a having a lot to do with Speyside uh, lately. Um, New South Wales members will know that we're having a big tasting coming up on the 27th of March, I think it is. Uh, a grand tour of Speyside. We're gonna go all the way around the area and taste some fantastic Speyside whiskies, and we're gonna learn a lot about Speyside. Uh, so I've been doing the necessary uh, swatting up on a few things and, and putting together a package. So I just felt like a space side tonight. So 9.168. Hope uh, you'll pour yourself a dram and, ha and have one with me as well. Uh, Paul, Paul, good to see you, mate. Have you are you back from Kiwi Land yet or somewhere else? Uh, Matt, music, a couple of couple of regulars there. So look, I have just returned from New Zealand. I crossed the ditch to go to Dramfest. Uh, many of you will know um, about Dramfest. I've seen a few people sign on tonight who were actually there with me. Uh, you're in Queenstown, mate. You're still there. Okay. Oh, you went back uh, back south again. Um, so yes, uh, I was over there. Dramfest, wonderful whiskey festival. I think it's uh, it's unfair to call it a whiskey show. Um, in the style of, of you know whiskey show and whiskey live and whiskey freedom and so on that, that we have here in Australia, because it is so much more than just uh, a show and an expo and a two day event, and that's what I'm going to be touching on tonight and, and talking about. Uh, excuse me, one moment. Oh, that's lovely. Merlin Events, good to see you. Makes for riveting television, doesn't it? Uh, just seeing a guy stick his nose in and breathe. That's a lovely drop. Very, uh, very typical of, of, of this uh, distillery style. It's always been known to be a, a, a lighter drop. Uh, Jay Davis, good to see you. Uh, while I'm at it, by the way, fantastic to meet some society members um, over in Christchurch uh, that I don't normally see. I see a lot of the Sydney crowd. There's a, there was a strong Melbourne contingent that came across of society members, so good to see you all there. So, Dramfest was uh, the last few days for me. I flew over on the Thursday. Uh, we actually had uh, drams on the tram on Thursday night, uh, which was actually, uh, I'll talk more about it in a moment, about the whole concept of Dramfest. It's, it's a whiskey festival in Christchurch, New Zealand. Christchurch, beautiful city, absolutely beautiful city, and such a tragedy that uh, uh, so much of it is still showing the scars of, of the earthquake from uh, a few years ago. Uh, and as you walk around the city, you, know, you still see vacant blocks, uh, uh, where buildings once stood, uh, some of the really old buildings, uh, you know, the, the sandstone and granite ones, 
uh, are still very much under repair. And then there's the, the, the new uh, buildings and the new life that has sprung up. But, uh, you know, with the river going through town there, just a, a really, really beautiful city. And so uh, on Thursday night, we had drams on the tram, which was getting on a tram, and uh, they took us for a bit of a tour through the city with some very entertaining commentary. Uh, some drams and food were served on board. Uh, on Friday, uh, I was part of a separate uh, group that had a very special tasting uh, that was led by a couple of industry legends in uh, Charlie McLean and Dave Broom. Uh, we tasted some wonderful whiskies there, and just uh, to me personally, I just sponged off uh, the two, the two uh, luminaries at the front of the room. Friday night was a fascinating affair. We watched uh, Dave Broom's film, uh, The Amber Light, which uh, came out earlier. Quite a few society members uh, contributed to that through uh, through the fundraising uh, 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 backing uh, finance that, that came through from that. And then Saturday, Sunday was the uh, the main event, I suppose. Uh, and your typical whiskey, what we used to call an expo uh, 20 odd years ago, uh, which is that showcase. And if you've been to, say, Whiskey Live in Australia or Whiskey Show, which is now in Melbourne and, uh, and, and Sydney, I think I may have seen it's moved to Adelaide as well now. Um, and then uh, uh, Whiskey, is it Whiskey Freedom over in Perth uh, and the QMWS have their show up in Brisbane as well. So there's now whiskey shows all around Australia that typically, you know, might have a session on a Friday night and a fe- uh, session on a Saturday. And... I want to talk about uh, that sort of thing tonight. So what I'd love is if you have any comments or thoughts about a whiskey show, why you go, what you look for, what you think makes a good whiskey show, that's kind of what we're going to describe and discuss tonight. So by all means, have those things in. Lockie um, asked, did I get the the duty-free toilet paper? I was tempted. Uh, I could have got four rolls of toilet paper for the same price as a Macallan 12-year-old. I had to weigh those two things up. Um, when I got to the, the hotel in Christchurch, the, my bathroom was actually was well stocked. So, uh, you know, I took a dump just for the sake of it. But uh, there you go. You can see these people with toilet rolls just going around, handing it out. It was fantastic stuff. I'm being silly. I digress. Um, Lockie says here, I always hear that Dramfest is one of the best. It is. It, it quite simply is, in in the, my opinion, the opinion of many, the best whiskey festival. Uh, certainly in the Southern Hemisphere. I can't say of. I've been to uh, any of the big ones in, in the UK or Europe. I've certainly been to Fashila, uh, the Speyside Whiskey Festival in Scotland, although they're not really sort of a, uh, you know, a two-day event and one thing. They're a festival that involves many different organisations. But uh, I've been to most, if not all, of the, the Whiskey Expo shows around Australia. And I have to say, without meaning to be negative or critical about it, but, but Dramfest leaves those other shows for, for dead. It is such a wonderful experience and I'm going to explore why that is um, and, and also as, as I say get get your feedback. Um, Seamus, next Aussie 29. I both have to okay on with you. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> nice one. Um, excuse me again. That is tasty stuff. So um, what makes a whiskey show a good whiskey show? What makes you here in Australia sign up to go see Whiskey Live or to go see a uh, whiskey show? You get the idea, any, any of those sort of ones. Um, look, clearly it's an opportunity to taste a whole stack of whiskies. You, you pay your money, you walk in the door, you're given a glass and you get the opportunity to go to up to all those stands and try different whiskies. And if you're clever about it, you'll, you'll deliberately hunt out whiskies that you've not tried before uh, you might try, try whiskies that aren't available at your local bottle shop and you get to taste quite a few. Uh, and that's certainly been, you know, the norm now for, for a long time. To my knowledge, the first whiskey show ever in Australia <clears throat> was actually the, the Whiskey Expo at the 2003 Malt Whiskey Convention in Australia, uh, which was in, in Canberra. So we've now had these shows for about 17 years. Uh, Paul's just chimed in with, I find the access to the owners and distilleries and their willingness to discuss their expressions and reasoning behind their actions just makes Dramfest. Mate, I agree with you, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. Um, so what makes a good show, first of all, is having a great range of whiskies. If, if you walk into the room and there's only 20, 40, 50 to choose from, well, that's still a, a you know fantastic lineup. But the reality is that some shows have more than others. So if there's 100 to choose from or 200 to choose from, or in the case of Dramfest, over 300, it's fantastic. Now, let's not kid ourselves. No one on this planet can taste 300 whiskies in a session and still uh, be standing by the end of it. In fact, you'd, you'd fall over long before then. 
Um, you can spittoon, and I, and I thoroughly um, endorse that, that. Obviously, the more you spittoon and the less you swallow, you, you, the, the longer you go for the day. But palate fatigue does kick in, whether you like it or not, and particularly uh, when you're dealing with, with car strength whiskies. But I think, number one, if you go to a whiskey show and there's a huge range to choose from, that that makes it great. And, and I say, as I say, Dramfest just has the largest range I've ever seen. Not just uh, Scotch whiskies this year. Uh, there was a large contingent of American whiskies. Um, uh, some European whiskies were there. Uh, the New Zealand whiskey scene is exploding. There are quite a few Kiwi uh, 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 distilleries and distributors there. Uh, there was a bit of a Japanese contingent and also a very large rum uh, contingent. That's another thing I'm seeing a lot now. Uh, we're seeing rum actually start to become a bit of a staple at these whiskey shows. Um, you know, if you go to a whiskey show, do you want to be tasting rum? Well, apparently, because uh, everyone's doing it. Uh, so that's that's the way that, that seems to be going now. Um, the other good thing is just the range of brands. Uh, one thing I know to causes a little bit of chatter here in Australia is the fact that some whiskey shows, it's very hard to say whiskey show when that actually refers to the brand name of one of them. We have one in Australia called The Whiskey Show. But if I, from now on, if I just say whiskey show, I'm obviously talking about the, the, the generic lot of them. But something that causes a bit of conversation in Australia is the fact that some shows seem to be better represented by brands than others. And this is a, this is a problem we have in Australia now. Um, Whiskey Live is in most capital cities. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, five or six shows in the calendar year. Uh, Whiskey Show is in Melbourne and Sydney. Uh, Whiskey and Dreams, the QMWS. And so if you're a distributor uh, of, a, of a reasonably small brand, or even if you're one of the big guys, you know, if you're, um, uh, you know, Pernod Ricard or, or William Grant and Sons, you really can't afford to be at them all. Uh, you just, it takes a lot, you, you know, it, pay, it costs to actually take a stand out. It costs to uh, fly your staff over there uh, to man the stand. And it costs you an awful lot in stock that you have to pour out. So not every uh, distributor and brand can attend those shows and um, they have to pick and choose which ones they go to. And what we've noticed over the last couple of years is that, uh, uh, how can I put it delicately? I, I guess I guess some shows um, at, at, at attract others and, and, and some don't. What I noticed with Dram Full in, uh, sorry, Dram Fest in uh, New Zealand is that uh, all the big brands were there. The other thing also, which I think is important is does a whiskey show attract the sort of people that you want to talk to, uh, the ambassadors, the station hosts. It's one thing to go up to a station and say, you know, I, I, I stand and say, I'd, I'd like to taste the 12 year old and someone just pours the 12 year old and away you go. Obviously, it's also an opportunity to talk and engage and learn from the representative behind the, the stand. And at some, some, I'll get this right, at some shows, the, the representative can be um, uh, someone very important in, in the brand. It might be, the, you know, the national brand ambassador. It might be the distiller, uh, the guy that, that, that makes it. Uh, or in some cases, it might just be a guy who's been engaged for the day as a volunteer to pour, in which case you're not going to learn much. So I think it's really fantastic that you get the opportunity to learn about uh, that brand. If you go up to the stand of, of, uh, of what's a good example? I don't know. Um, well, say at Dramfest uh, this year, if you went up to the Ardbeg stand, uh, the guy that makes the whiskey, uh, Brendan McCarran, was there. You could actually speak to the guy. So if you had a question about, well, what is the difference between Ardbeg 10 and Ardbeg uh, Anno or Ardbeg Curry of Reckon, the guy that makes the spirit was there to talk to and, and, and get his thoughts on it. Um, that's very different to going to another stand where there's just a guy uh, who's being, you know, uh, paid by the outer pour drams and knows nothing about what he's pouring. And it, it, it pains me to say that some of the whiskey shows in Australia uh, have that problem where they, the, the distributors at least send stock, but they can't, uh, they just don't have the personnel to have their ambassador on hand. So, uh, yeah, as I say, Dram First worked very well from that point of view. Um, I think venue's important as well. Um, we've all been to some some whiskey shows where the venues were very small and crowded and, you know, you, there were queues of four or five deep behind the stand to try and get to the front. Uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder action, you can't quite get around. Uh, there's not room to, to, uh, to, to you know, talk and converse with one another. So I think, I think the quality of the, of the venue uh, is important. And we've noticed a lot of the whiskey shows in Australia have experimented with other venues and they, they try one, go somewhere else, maybe go back to where they started from. Um, in Sydney, we're, we're very blessed with Whiskey Fair, which is uh, put on by the guys at the Oak Barrel. And that's a fantastic event, which I really love and endorse. 
uh, but they've had issues with uh, just uh, the size that they've had in, in their downstairs area now they've moved upstairs where there's a bit more breathing room um, the location um, the, the I guess the, the venues proximity to public transport is an important one as well you want somewhere that's close to the city um, Dramfest was unbelievable it was at the town hall so it was walking distance from the middle of the CBD um, in other cities you know if you've got a uh, uh, well, hopefully you can get public transport out there, but everyone, if everyone's turning up in an Uber and leaving by an Uber, that causes issues as well. Um, and uh, the other thing also is is an important feature, I think, for a whiskey show is, is access to food. Uh, let's be honest, you're drinking alcohol for an extended session and period of time. Um, you need a full stomach. Um, and, and some venues and organisers, or organisers do a fantastic job of having catering nearby or choosing a venue where... Uh, there are food options or having mobile food stands come to you. Uh, again, Tram Fest was a winner. It was absolutely a, a sensational time. Uh, looking for more comments here. I haven't seen anyone chime in anything else. If you have a comment about a whiskey show you've been to, uh, something that you, you liked or disliked, uh, share it with the group and we, we can chat about it tonight. Um, water is the important thing. The, the way to survive a long session is to hydrate all the way through. And so having lots of water stations around is so important. I remember back in the really early days, you walked in the in the room, you got your registration, and, and they gave you, uh, you know, um, well, one of these, and, and that was to last you for the day. Now we're a bit more clever, and we actually have uh, lots of water fountains and taps and, and, and cups and all the rest of it. And it's really important that uh, if you want to go the journey of these events, have your dram, have a sip. All you need is a sip to taste it. You know, they'll often pour that much into your glass. In my opinion, I, I think it's a bit silly to drink that whole amount. Uh, you don't need that much. Have a sip, you'll appreciate. You know, you can nose it. You, a sip will give you the palate. It'll give you the finish. It'll allow you to assess whether you liked it or not. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I, I tip the rest out in, in the spittoon bucket or I spit. Um, fill it up with water uh, once to rinse it out. Drink that. Fill it up again to hydrate. And uh, look, you'll probably go to the, the, the toilet a few times during the session, but you will stay remarkably fresh. And I have to say, uh, with a bit of experience at, at these things, uh, I, I, I can go the journey and, uh, and, and consume and drink all through the day and appreciate an awful lot of whiskies and still be remarkably fresh at the end of the day. And that's that's important. Uh, Lockie said here, do we have a whiskey show which attracts such big name distilleries, distillers in Australia? I have met plenty of Aussie distillers, but don't recall many international ones. This is very true, Lockie. Um, none of the... Um, whiskey shows here in Australia have done a fantastic job at getting those major Scottish luminaries out. Um, and the problem is because they're multiple events. Dramfest is one event. It's held every two years in one city. So you can say, come to Dramfest and they come out for it. Whiskey Live is in four or five cities uh, over a period of time. So if a luminary from Scotland comes out for the Sydney show, he won't be around for the Melbourne show. Same with Whiskey Show, it's hard to do. Um, off what we're seeing a lot of now, uh, and it's that showdown in, in Melbourne Whiskey in Dreams, I can't remember the name of it now, I'm sorry, uh, but they tend to piggyback on the back of Dramfest. They know that these guys have flown all the way out from Scotland to this part of the world, and they tend to tack Australia on one side or the other, uh, and so occasionally we've had some shows where we've been able to uh, be blessed with uh, those guys' presence um, simply by virtue of the fact that they were already across the ditch. Uh, Mr. Duckett, good to see you. He's saying that's not a glass. I know. I'm sorry, mate. It's a small one. I do have your, your Duckett buckets here. They're um, out in the kitchen at the moment. Uh, oh, man, that's just improved. How many people try this? See, see the bigger picture. Absolutely beautiful space I drop. Oh, man, that's good. Hits the spot. I'm going to talk about something else in just a moment as well, about another dram. Uh, Eric Young, good to see you. Morky Moo, good to see you. Nick, something I liked about Dramfest is the crowd it attracts. Able to give great chats with everyone attending is a big plus for me. Nick, fantastic point. Uh, I was actually talking, I made a point of talking uh, to a couple of the, the ambassadors and the reps who'd flown out uh, as a bit of research for an article I'm writing at the moment for, for Whiskey and Wisdom. And one of the comments they all said, I asked them, why do you come all the way to New Zealand? It's a long way to travel. In fact, it's the furthest whiskey show from your, your, your country, of uh, your residence. Why do you come all the way out here? And one of the things that quite a few of them said consistently was, it's a good crowd. He said that the people are well behaved. 
I think I've just had a Black Hawk helicopter fly over my house. That was <laughs> incredible. Um, they said the crowd is well behaved. One of the blokes said, said to me, what we're doing here at Dramfest this weekend, we could not do at Whiskey Live Glasgow. There's a whiskey show. There's a whiskey show in Glasgow. And he said, uh, it's a mess. We, there's no way we would pour out such good stock for them. You know, uh, they just all turn up and get drunk and start a fight. Um, so there's a lot of feedback that that crowd um, is a good one. Now, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to get myself into trouble here. But I have noticed at the various whiskey shows in Australia that I've presented at, there's been, been plenty where uh, uh, the society used to take a stand uh, and I, I, would, I would man the stands at the society uh, in, in the old days and when I was freelancing for, for other brands as well. Some of the shows here in Australia attract a good crowd, uh, others not so. Um, I've written an article about that on Whiskey and Wisdom if you wanted to read that further, but uh, it's not always pleasant behind the table and uh, sometimes you get a very educated crowd that want to talk and sometimes you get people who just turn up and want to, want to drink and get drunk and, and that's not much fun either. Uh, Shane Scotch, what's your thoughts on the Queensland Whiskey Expo? Okay, so the guys from the QMWS. I was actually uh, talking to my mate uh, Dan Mathers, who's uh, he's behind that. He was over at uh, Whiskey uh, Fest, sorry, Dram Fest as well. Um, I think they do a fantastic job uh, and they're filling a, a need and a gap there. Uh, they, they don't have the same number of shows up there in Queensland. They've engaged tremendously with industry. Um, if, if you go to the Queensland, the Brisbane one there, uh, there's plenty of main commercial brands. They've got some independence there as well. I think it's a, a great show. So I certainly endorse the uh, the QMWS one, uh, their Whiskey Expo. Uh, Hot Dog Extravaganza, good to see you. Fife's Whiskey. Um, <laughs> Seamus, I think, is know what, knows what I'm talking about there. Um, so... I've, oh God, I finished my dram. Um, I've got another one here. This is something I want to bring up as well. This is an older whiskey. Now my, my Matt, uh, Mr. Bailey and I um, have different words and views and opinions on a few things occasionally. This is what my colleague Matt Bailey would call paper label bottling. Now I disagree with that term. It's, in my opinion, it's a bit silly because um, you know, here's a label and it's made of paper. I can understand calling it a paper label. Uh, guess what? Here's a bottle and that's a label and it's made of paper. That's also a paper label. So I don't quite know why uh, Matt's fallen into the habit of calling these the paper label bottlings. They're all bloody paper labels. Um, this is the original label. So I think we should start using that terminology now. Let's talk about original label bottlings. <clears throat> and I can't remember if I uh, had a dram of this when I last um, uh, did the live stream for you, but it's 10.61. Um, and it's from a, uh, it's not said, we didn't used to put it on the label back in the day, but uh, this was actually a, um, a sherry butt, uh, 10 years old, bottled in 2008. And uh, it was one of the experimental peated uh, bunnies. Bunner Haven at the time um, did not peat its whiskey. And in fact, they did an experimental run in 1994 and an experimental run in 1997. And those experiments were deemed failures. Uh, they weren't happy with the re result. They weren't happy, uh, they didn't think it was a great peated whiskey. And those casks were sold onto the independent bottlers, which is how the society grabbed a hold of it. Of course, the distillery changed hands and was bought by another company uh, not long after that. And uh, they then started peating regularly. So we see peated Bunhavens all the time now, uh, and we take them for granted. But uh, back when this came out in, in 2008, it was a very rare thing because they'd only done two experimental, experimental runs prior to that. I said it was from a sherry cask, and you can see just how much darker that is. And sure enough, there's a bit of peat there. That's a lovely drop. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, to Matt, who I think is watching, uh, and to others, uh, please stop calling these paper labels. Uh, they're the original labels. Uh, lucky, I have noticed a development of an oversaturation of Australian representation at a few whiskey shows recently. Do you think we should be pushing local over international at these events? Mate, give the public what they want. Um, I remember at a few whiskey shows, there was no Australian presence because they couldn't spare the stock. You know, uh, what they distilled uh, a few years earlier was so rare and precious, they couldn't afford to come to the shows and, and pour their stock out. So I've, I've also seen the other side of the argument where people were complaining that there was no Australian presence. Now we're seeing more of them, so is, is that a good thing or not? Um, I think it's a personal thing. I think some people would walk into the room and go, you beaut, I get the chance to try two, three, four, five different Australian whiskies. 
Um, others who probably have maybe more of a focus on, on just Scotch whiskey will give those tables a miss. And that's the beauty of a, a whiskey show, isn't it? You can decide which brands you want to try and which ones you don't. So I don't know, Lucky. Uh, there was a lot of New Zealand whiskey at Dramfest. I didn't go to any of them, to be honest. I, I wasn't interested in trying the New Zealand whiskey simply because it's still very young. And I thought it would be unfair of me to try that and go, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's too young. It'll be good in a few more years. I'll certainly go back in a few years when those distilleries are more established and they've got more mature stock uh, and, and give it a try then. Um, <laughs> Lucky, I can see your comment there. I, uh, Based on what I've written a bit lately, I might give that one a... Oh, that's lovely. A Peter Bunny is a good thing, isn't it? Uh, diplomatic answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, the other thing that made Dramfest fantastic... Now, this is, this is a good point. I want to get your thoughts on this. Masterclasses. One of the good things about Dramfest is that the session is a long session. It goes for five hours. Doors open at one o'clock. Doors, you get kicked out at six. So you've got five hours to do things. So they have masterclasses during the day, which you can sign up for as an extra. It costs a bit of money, but you can go to a masterclass. And the point is, at those masterclasses, they specifically feature whiskies that are not out there in the main room. Um, and they are presented by... Scottish luminaries or, or the distillery uh, brand ambassadors or, or the distillers or, or whatever. So they're great things to get along to. We tried that at some of the Australian shows. Uh, I know Whiskey Show tried it for a bit. Uh, I did one for Whiskey Live. I was asked to, to give a show there. The problem with a lot of the Australian shows is that the sessions only go for three hours and a lot of punters don't want to leave the room and sit in a, in a masterclass for you know, 20, 30 minutes if what's on offer isn't all that enticing. And so a lot of people simply won't leave the main room. And uh, I know uh, at Whiskey Show a couple of years, well, a long, long time ago now, uh, there were some great ambassadors who came out from Scotland for the event and they just weren't able to sell the tickets or get people to go to those masterclasses. Um, one thing Dramfest has got right is that it's a long session. They have quality presenters and you know when you sign up and pay the extra $20, $30 to attend the masterclass, you're going to taste some very special stuff. Now, I got along to a couple of the masterclasses at, at Dramfest. I went to uh, the Ardbeg one with Brendan McCarran, who is Dr. Bill Lumsden's 2IC. He's one of the guys on the whiskey creation team and he makes the whiskies. And we tried some fantastic expressions um, of, of some very special cast strength Ardbegs from just five barrels that were being put together, uh, a work in progress. And then we were the very first people in the world to taste what will be the committee uh, release this year of Ardbeg uh, Black or Black, if you want to try it, with the, uh, the New Zealand. That was a horrible bar, wasn't it? Um, which was a fantastic thing. I went to a masterclass with George Grant of Glen Farkless, the guy who owned the heir apparent, you know, uh, his family owns the distillery. We had some fantastic family cask uh, whiskies. The first two whiskies in that masterclass were both 36 years old. How many times do you go to uh, an event and, the, and what you taste is 36 years old? So they were fantastic. Um, I also went to the uh, Glenlivet Masterclass uh, and listened to Alan Winchester, who's a, a mate I've known for a long time and it was fantastic just to, I just, a, you know, a sponge uh, uh, and listen to, to what he has to say. So I think those masterclasses are a great thing at Dramfest. Over here in Australia, we've not quite worked out how to uh, showcase them and interface them with our, with our main event. So that's been interesting too. Uh, Paul's made a good point here. I'll go outside my comfort zone at festivals to expose myself to other varieties. Mate, fantastic, well done. Uh, and I agree, and I had a couple of mates that were there who decided to go to one of the rum uh, masterclasses just to educate themselves about rum, and they came out saying it was so worth it, it was fantastic. Put, as you say, Paul, put yourself out of the comfort zone and try things you wouldn't otherwise try. The other thing I think that, that makes Dramfest pretty special is the periphery, uh, the events around the, the, the periphery of the main main event. It's, yes, there's a tasting session on the Saturday and Sunday, but uh, we had the movie night on the Friday. There was drams on the tram on the Thursday. So there were other things to attract people there. So not surprisingly, people come from all over New Zealand to the event. They fly in from Auckland and Wellington up north. I would estimate, and it's only an estimate, but I reckon there were probably at least 50 Australians who flew across for it. Uh, I myself was part of a group of, of 30 alone and I know there was a good contingent from uh, Melbourne uh, who went along as well and some Brisbane folks. So yeah, it's a wonderful event and uh, you know, to, to the team and the people here in Australia who are behind the Australian shows uh, and one of them was actually over there doing some recon. 
Um, we can learn a, a, a thing or two. We can learn how to, to make one of those uh, those shows really sing. Not that the Australian shows uh, are, are bad, as I say. I'm not trying to, to criticise them, but like anything, you can do things and you can do things better. Uh, and Dramfest over the years, and it's been going a long time now, has really uh, got it down to a, a well-oiled machine. Uh, Lockie says, for me, the shows are about exploring something new. I don't need to try what's already on my shelf and a tipple of the SMWS heavyweights that get poured. That, mate, great point. Why would you spend the money and go in and, and taste something that's already on your shelf at home? I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. So, folks, that sort of gets me to, to the end of what I had to chat about tonight. Um, it was a, a fantastic event. Um, and we're coming into whiskey season here in Australia. We're, we're coming into seeing uh, the shows uh, roll out around the country um, in, in March, April, May, June. There's one in July. Um, and, uh, yeah, get, get along. Uh, they're a fantastic thing. Support them. You know, the people that put these on bleed, you know, uh, uh, blood, sweat and tears, uh, shed blood, sweat and tears to, to, to make these things happen. And uh, if punters don't get along, they don't get the revenue, they can't entice the brands to come along, uh, we can't entice the people from Scotland to come out and impress us. I say Scotland and the other countries as well, of course. Um, and, and we need that uh, for what's ultimately good, good for the industry. A question I get asked a lot is, how come the Scotch Rock Whiskey Society does not showcase ourselves at many of those events? Uh, we did for a long time and found it wasn't worthwhile. I'll come back and explain why that is in a moment. We've tipped our, dipped our all back into the water recently at a few, uh, and some of them have been successful and, and, and more successful than others. Um, one of the problems we have at these shows is that, certainly in Australia, you go along to all the stands and you try something you like. You know, you might go to the William Grant and Sons um, stand and, and you try a, a special, you know, Glenn Fittick 15 year old, and you really like it. And you say, well, where can I buy this? And they say, well, you can get it at your local store, or in fact, you can get it in the shop just outside the front door there. One of the problems we have with the society is that people would come up, try our whiskies, and go, that is fantastic. Where can I buy it? And you had to say, well, actually, you've got to become a member first. So before you spend $180 on this bottle, I need you to spend $120 just to become a member. And that's a hard sell uh, and a hard proposition in the context of one of those whiskey sessions. So for that reason, we would go to these shows and get a lot of interest. People would cross the floor to come to us. Word would go around that the society had an amazing bottling. And we'd have a lot of people come and, and, and enjoy our whiskey, but to then actually... The society is nothing without members. If we don't have members, we're nothing. We don't, we don't exist. Um, and so pouring out whiskey to people who weren't interest, interested in becoming members uh, was really a bit of a waste of time and money. And as I said, it costs money to go to those things. Uh, you can spend a fortune just to rent the stand. Uh, we need to pay people to be there for the session for the weekend. And we pour out a lot of very expensive stock. People forget that, you know, when, when you know, just to give an example, when William Grant and Sons are pouring out Glenfiddich 12 year old, you know, lovely whiskey with a retail price of $60. When we're pouring out stuff that's anywhere between $180 to $350, it's a different proposition. So um, for that reason, we were careful about where we choose to uh, showcase ourselves at, uh, which shows and which audiences and what we put on. But we are exploring that a bit more. We're trying to get back in, into, the, uh, into the scene there a little bit. Uh, that's something that's one of Matt, Matt Bailey's projects and he's working on that and, and doing a great job. Also fantastic to see the Scotch Rock Whiskey Society at Dramfest. Uh, the New, Ze New Zealand branch there is under a new uh, uh, organisational structure as well, uh, just as we are here in Australia, and it was great to see them. So uh, I think I've come to about the end of all I can talk about. I've been going for half an hour as well. I have a dram here to enjoy uh, over the rest of the night. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Great to see you as always. I suspect Matt will be back on uh, on stream tomorrow night and he looks forward to your company then. Uh, by all means, drop me a line. Email's good. Um, you, you can, uh, another thing I just, sorry, before I sign off, another thing I, I try to remind people is Matt and I share this, this channel. A lot of people send messages through on Instagram uh, with the intention of it going to Matt, and of course I see them all as well, so just remember that. <laughs> um, but if you do have a question for me uh, about any of the whiskies from, from a seller master point of view, um, email's great for me. I love email. I'm on it all the time. I respond very quickly. Uh, bear that in mind. Hey, uh, great talking to you, great drinking with you, and look forward to your company again. Matt will be back tomorrow night, and we hope to see you at one of our many events coming up over the next month. Till then, cheers and bye for now.